The fighting nations of World War II produced some of the toughest soldiers in human history. Some of these men and women gained legendary status through their finely honed skills, incredible courage and force of will. In this video, we're going to shed some light on the soldiers with the highest number of confirmed kills from eight fighting nations, which we should warn you are mostly snipers. Now, if you want to breed your own super soldier conveniently on your mobile phone or browser, the amazing app Call of War has your name written all over it. One of the most historically accurate World War II games I've seen, in Call of War, you're tasked with taking command of a nation during its darkest hour. In this grand strategy game, you as the player are in charge of defending and expanding your country. You have to make pinpoint decisions that can ultimately decide your country's fate, so make sure you're smart when managing your resources, forging strong alliances with other players, conducting espionage missions, and getting ready to prepare for the ultimate confrontation. Now, the one thing I really enjoy about Call of War compared to other games is that it actually takes several weeks to complete campaigns, meaning you actually have to strategize. In addition to this, I also love that it's browser-based, just in case I don't want to play it on my phone for any reason. In saying this, guys, I've set up a special game of Call of War for the first viewers who click the link down below. Type my name the front in the search bar and enter the password unknown facts of World War II for access. Slots are limited for this, so don't waste time. Now, even if you don't make that, just for watching this video, you have the opportunity for 13,000 gold and a month of premium for free. This offer is only available for 30 days, so click the link in the description, choose a country, and fight your way to victory in epic real-time battles. Ivan Sidorenko rose from humble beginnings in the USSR. Initially conscripted into a mortar company during the Battle of Moscow, Sidorenko would swiftly discover he had another unique skill. When he wasn't raining high explosive shells on German soldiers, Sidorenko would carry out his own missions. Arming himself with the standard Mosin Nagant rifle, Sidorenko would strike out alone into the outskirts of Moscow. There, he would camouflage himself in the rubble of the scarred city, sniping the enemy from great distances. A natural predator fighting on his home turf, Sidorenko began to rack up an impressive number of kills as well as vehicles destroyed. On one mission, he destroyed four enemy vehicles, one after another, with four shots aimed at the fuel tanks. His commanders recognized the deadly potential of this part-time sniper both as a killer and valuable propaganda piece. Sidorenko was given a sniper variant of the Mosin Nagant and recruits to train. Their training was tough and recruits had to learn to live by Sidorenko's ethos. One shot, one kill. Soviet snipers like Sidorenko were hugely influential in the chaotic street-to-street -street fighting in Russia's bombed-out cities. Their ability to deliver death from afar spread fear through the German ranks. And rightly so, as by the end of the war, Sidorenko, the USSR's top sniper and top soldier, boasted 500 confirmed kills. While Soviet snipers were crawling through the rubble to line up the perfect shot, US infantryman Aldi Murphy was leading his platoon from the front with courage so extreme that the US military ran out of medals to give him. His coolness under fire became legendary among US forces. During the Normandy campaign, Murphy killed upwards of 50 enemy soldiers in one devastating attack. As per his Medal of Honor citation, Murphy was attacked by six tanks and several waves of infantry. Ordering his men back to take cover, he climbed on a burning tank destroyer and fired its machine gun at the enemy. He was alone and exposed to German fire from three sides, but his deadly fire killed dozens of Germans and caused their infantry attack to waver. This was just one of many firefights that justly earned Murphy his deadly reputation. Some sources credit him with around 240 confirmed kills, but this is difficult to check as the figure includes kills from artillery strikes Murphy called in. For us though, the conspicuous bravery of Aldi Murphy and his skill under fire earns him a place in this video. Born to a long line of hunters from the Austrian Alps, Metius Hetzenauer was scripted into the German army immediately after his 17th birthday. Having grown up hunting in the mountains, the young Austrian was sent to an elite Alpine unit which made use of his special skills. He was later selected for specialized sniper training which he completed in 1944. The German army of 1944, as we all know, was in dire need of men and equipment. The Eastern Front had ravaged the once powerful Wehrmacht, and a seemingly inexhaustible torrent of Soviet soldiers was crashing into the German lines. 
Hitsanawa's unit was deployed to the Hungarian and Slovakian regions of the Carpathian Mountains, a range that runs through several countries in Central Europe. The young sniper excelled in this environment, applying the techniques of hunting deer to hunting Soviet machine gunners and commanders. Sometimes, Hetzenawa would kill every soldier in an enemy squad just to clear the path to a field commander. In the 10 months Hetzenawa spent fighting the Soviets, he scored 345 confirmed kills, the highest among any German soldier. But like many other snipers in this video, his own estimate is far higher, around 500. While terrifying, Wehrmacht snipers were not unkillable. British soldier Harry Furness was well aware of this fact, making it his mission to kill as many Wehrmacht snipers as he could. As the British soldier with the highest number of confirmed kills, you could say he was successful. Furness did most of his deadly work in rural France in 1944. He was first and foremost a recon specialist, building concealed positions at night close to the German lines to observe them by day. On more than one occasion, Furness was trapped, completely undetected, in a position behind German lines when they advanced unexpectedly. He waited for days without moving until the Germans retreated. Furness returned to HQ that night with the most detailed report of a German unit his commander had ever seen. He had also been gone so long that he was reported missing in action. On other occasions, Furness used his supreme concealment skills to stalk German snipers through the countryside for days. He always searched their positions after firing his shot and ending their lives, taking their scopes as souvenirs. By the end of the war, Furness had filled a crate with German scopes and his total confirmed kill count reached 117. We've all heard of Finnish sniper Simo Hauha, but this video would be incomplete without him. The last thing an unlucky enemy soldier never saw. Hauha earned the nickname White Death during the Second World War and became a Finnish national hero. Fighting the 105 day winter war between Finland and the USSR was grueling work. In the sub-zero temperatures and waist deep snow of eastern Finland, equipment and vehicles quickly broke down. Soldiers spent weeks in the wilderness fighting hypothermia as ferociously as they fought their enemy. In the whitewashed landscape, Hauha hunted Soviet soldiers like the woodsman he was. He had scattered numerous sniper nests through the forests of eastern Finland, waiting hours in these positions for an unfortunate Soviet to enter his sights. His technique was devastatingly successful. On the 21st of December 1939, Hauha killed at least 25 enemy soldiers in a single day. Despite his immense skill and growing fame, Hauha felt he had simply done his duty to Finland. Reports on his kill count vary, but it's possible it could be as high as 542 confirmed kills. This incredible feat makes Hauha the top ranked sniper of the war and one of the best snipers to have ever lived. Czechoslovakian medic and sniper Marie Lalkova is a truly unique case, not just because she was a woman, but because she was proficient with both taking and saving lives. Lalkova volunteered with the first Czechoslovak independent field battalion when it was founded in 1942. This unit was thrown together to stand with the Soviet Red Army in defense of Central Europe. Among its ranks were hardened veterans of the Czechoslovak Legion. Slovak prisoners of war, defectors from Nazi-occupied lands, and Czech-speaking volunteers. At the personal request of Stalin, this cobbled-together unit was launched into combat at the Battle of Sokolovo. Here, the freshly trained sniper Lelkova would make her first mark. Fighting alongside the battered soldiers of the Soviet Red Army, Lelkova shot seven German soldiers dead, making her a sniper ace. As the wider battle for Eastern Europe between fascists and communists dragged on, Lalkova distinguished herself on several occasions. In 1944, Stalin demanded women be removed from combat roles, and Lalkova was sent to a tank unit as its chief medic. By the end of the war, she had 30 kills to her name, but countless more tankers were alive because of her medical expertise. This next infantryman has the honor of not only the most confirmed kills for his country, but also achieved this feat in a single engagement. Nepalese Gurkha rifleman Lachiman Gurung fought the Japanese while serving the Indian Army, under the broader command of the British Empire, earning his place in history and a Victoria Cross 
in a single firefight. Gurung was manning the forwardmost trench with two comrades, with the rest of his platoon to his rear. On the night of the 12th of May 1945, at least 200 Japanese soldiers attacked his position head on. The attack began with a barrage of hand grenades, the majority of which Gurung threw back, except one, which killed his comrades and blew off his right hand. When lesser soldiers would have just accepted their fate, Gurung loaded and fired his rifle left-handed for four hours, buying his unit time to regroup. He is credited with single-handedly inspiring other soldiers to defend their position to the last man. When the morning came, 31 dead Japanese soldiers lay sprawled directly in front of Gurung's trench. Another 57 lay around the immediate area, and it's likely Gurung killed the majority of these men too. His bravery was so inspiring and critical to his platoon's defense of their position that all 87 dead Japanese were attributed to him. Of all the soldiers in this video, this next sniper was undoubtedly the most dedicated to his cause. Born and raised in East Prussia, a German enclave located directly north of Poland, Bruno Sutkus was a true believer in German nationalism. He joined the Hitler Youth as a teenager and progressed through its ranks before joining the SA Brownshirts at the age of 18. The Brownshirts were the first paramilitary wing of the Nazi party. They were the initial Nazi muscle, starting street fights, intimidating politicians, threatening journalists and smashing up Jewish owned businesses. They also organized military training and this was where young Sutkus learned to shoot. Sutkus enthusiastically joined the German army as a sniper and fought on the Eastern Front. Brutally meticulous when it came to killing the enemies of Nazism, he insisted on keeping a book detailing every kill he made, and he also went as far as to have each kill in this diary of death confirmed by at least one other soldier and checked off by his commander. His count on the final page of his book? 209 confirmed kills. So, these were just 8 soldiers with the most confirmed kills from 8 fighting nations. You already know there's going to be a second part to this video, but which World War II soldiers do you think we'll include? Let us know in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, as usual, make sure you check out some of the links in the description below, including our Patreon, where you'll get access to exclusive monthly videos and a range of other benefits. Our Relax Jack music channel, where you can listen to the music played on this channel, uninterrupted by my voice on that channel. And our socials on Discord, Instagram, and Facebook for exclusive content and chats with other history buffs. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.